Oh, it's recording the whole time. <laughs> yeah, it's been recording this entire time. Oh, okay. So, welcome everybody back to the aesthetic agenda. I didn't mess it up this time. I was thinking about like making that my thing, like messing up the name of the show every time, and then you guys laughing and. It doesn't. I don't even remember laughing. what you said last time. I think I said aesthetic agenda. <laughs> I got a little tongue twisted when I talked about it. Anyway, since y'all don't remember, well, I'm the one. It seems with all like the, you messed it up again. Yeah, maybe so. <laughs> I'm I'm the one with all the head injuries, and y'all are supposed to remember all this stuff. We have a lot to remember lately. Yeah, yeah. I guess you're right. We have a lot of things going on, don't we? Yeah, we do. Like yeah. I'm getting gray hairs. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's let's keep these people entertained and tell them what we're here to talk about today. I want to talk about a little bit of Botox stuff. Um, I know it's probably the the thing that we get the most questions about, right, are neurotoxins, and people don't know what neurotoxins is, but they know what Botox is, and right. so I want to talk about a few things about Botox. How does that sound? Sounds good. Sounds lovely. Okay. So the first thing I want to talk about is on your phone, Catherine, and so while I work on this, um, why don't you tell the people, Amber, tell the people your favorite <laughs> thing about Botox. Well, if you saw in a previous episode, I'm highly allergic to wrinkles. So, I absolutely love that, like, it only takes two or three days to kick in for the beginning part of it. Um, then about two weeks, so it's perfect to, like, plan right before a big event or holiday. Um, make sure you schedule in advance, though, I guess. Um, I, to be honest, my favorite part about Botox, neurotoxin, is um, my makeup goes on a lot smoother. I was just about to say that. I love my that. My makeup that. looks amazing. I got it done two weeks ago, and Kat did a great job. <laughs> Thanks. Well, I love it because it makes my wife happy. Oh, it definitely makes me happy. Like that, it does. It's therapy for me. Beautiful well, confidence boost. Mm -hmm. No Keeps wrinkles, no problems. There you go. One of my favorite um, research articles when I was starting to research all the stuff and and looking to change sections in my careers was uh you guys remember that that research article that came out about the twins in europe oh yeah mm -hmm. that's a good picture that stuff is baller like i need to find a picture and i'll put it up but there were a set of twins uh female who were in i guess in their 40s when the yeah, the, I think so. the the research paper actually happened but they had one distinct difference about themselves and one of them was um getting botox three times a year for like 15 years or something Right. I think she missed like 10-ish, like 15, yeah. something yeah. like that. And then the other one might have gotten it two or three times collectively during that same time. And they showed pictures of them in their young 20s together. And they were like identical. But I'll be damned, man. If you look at them now and they took, you know, clinical pictures of them, they don't, I mean, they definitely look like distinctly different people. One is markedly older than the other. Yeah. One looks a lot older and one looks a lot younger. That's why I like starting it younger. Um, I know a lot of people probably don't agree with that, but I think it's coming around now. Um, but the younger you start, you prevent those wrinkles from like Being settling deeper, yeah. into your skin. So like Arden, but Arden is your is the I can't talk. Yours is almost kind of genetic. Oh yeah. Hundred um, percent. Your whole family has these deep, deep expression lines so when you're like a bulldog up here yeah just kind of so like <laughs> when you're not making expressions when your face is just completely relaxed you have lines and that's not what botox is going after it's going after the ones that are created when you make your expression so if they're already there when you're relaxed you probably should have started when you were younger and we have some other work that we can do yeah like there's some the all hope is not lost <laughs> but there's just going to be a little bit more legwork to do there you go and i think that's what the was so great about the article is because it basically demonstrated, hey, start when you're 20, start when you're 21, especially if you look at your mom and you see what you could potentially look like in 20 or 30 years. Mm -hmm. Like, And it's not like a 20 something year old's gonna need like 50 units, yeah. you know, because right. you probably don't have as much wrinkles as someone 10, 20 years older than you. Right. But, you know, just starting to prevent that constant expression, that constant muscle movement, you're gonna, Look younger for a lot longer, which is always nice. I know because I, I still like to get carded. <laughs> <laughs> me too. I have a bunch of friends that have already told me they're like, "I haven't started yet. I haven't started it," and I'm like, 
you might want to go ahead and do it. Like we're almost to our mid thirties. Like Mm -hmm. it's, it's time. Like, otherwise you're going to be spending a lot more money down the road. Yep. Yeah. So my first, my biggest or my favorite thing about Botox is one, I love getting carded. Two, I love it when people say, well, you don't need Botox or you don't need any of that. It's like, because I do it. Exactly. Right. This is how I maintain this, this look. And if you think about it, I mean, I know y'all like your girl math and everything. <laughs> oh, I love girl math. It's best. <laughs> <laughs> but starting Botox at 20 is going to be a heck of a lot cheaper mm-hmm. in the long run than yeah, catch up. having to play catch up when you're 40. Yep. Right. Now you're including the cost of potentially cosmetic surgery. Exactly. Um, the, the constant lasers and microneedling and chemical peel sessions that it's going to take to eradicate those static lines. Mm-hmm. Um, that's, that's a lot of, that's a lot of investment. Prevention is cheaper and easier than correction. Facts. Facts. Straight facts. <laughs> and your medical grade skincare. Yes. Oh, it does wonders with your Botox. Non-negotiable. Yeah. SPF, BFF. What? What do you tell your patients about the difference between your static lines and your dynamic lines? I gotta look at Ooh. The- <laughs> well, for the, for the people, for you know, for the six people that are listening, the the difference between a static line and a dynamic line, or static righteds and dynamic righteds, is that your static lines are there when you're sleeping. Mm-hmm. Your static lines are always rest. there, right? Kind of like me and my little bulldog forehead. Um, your dynamic lines are your lines of expression. So when you win the lottery and you get really shocked and surprised and those lines come up in your forehead, those are the movement lines. And the muscle movement yeah. is your, yeah. So Botox, ZMN, Dysport, not gonna touch your Juvo. Dynamic. I mean, it's static you're, lines. You're static, yeah. yeah. Those lines are treating your dynamic lines, your lines of expression. Um, that's why women joke. They're like, I'm so excited, but I just can't show it. That's the Botox that's helped knocking out their lines of expression but the static lines are what we were just talking about those are the lines that you can't really treat with botox I you might too right here it can it's hard it's they hard to soften. treat yeah, yeah they, they soften. soften um they diminish a little bit but i never promise that they're gonna completely go away because likely they're not so with that being said arden what is your one of your favorite procedures to do which is this is one of my favorites too um because of the difference that it makes when someone has that deep set, like, 11 line between their brow, what do you do? This is like the dating game. Like, I better be, <laughs> I better get this right. And I already know the answer. So, toxin is great in certain circumstances mm-hmm. for those 11s. Um, but what I think you're talking about is our smooth threads mm-hmm. that we put um, kind of like filling in a canal or filling in a canyon, right? So, so. Anybody who, man, I love my, me some threads. I love smooth threads. I love twi- uh, lifting threads. The PDO threads are an awesome treatment. Um, basically what they are is they're a dissolvable stitch. So just like when you're in surgery or you're getting a cut that's sewed up or something, it's a very similar structure to that. Uh, two different things about it. Number one is that it dissolves 100%, goes away. Uh, over about six or eight weeks, uh, the body absorbs it and goes away. And number two is after or as the body is absorbing it, it creates new collagen tissue that it leaves behind and that's yours to keep. So when we're talking about putting these little smooth threads basically anywhere, we can use them anywhere on the body. Um, we use them to tighten up um, flabby skin around the belly after a pregnancy or you can use them in the arms to tighten up your arms a little bit. Um, yep. And then, right here. Sorry. Right. Doing that little Nefertiti kind of lift or tightening up those those neck sagging and um, what I really like about smooth threads, especially in this area between the eyebrows, is that you can really treat an area that otherwise can't be treated with much else. And the results are pretty impactful right away. Um, you can walk out of there with a, a noticeably different appearance and you can repeat it monthly. Uh, pretty cheap too. So it's one of my favorite ones. I would go say noticeably but natural looking appearance because, yeah. Yes. yeah. I mean, you would never know. If someone came up to me and, you know, like, hey, I got threads, I'd be like, oh, okay. Like, <laughs> let me see your before and after because I wouldn't even be able to tell. Right. So. Now, some providers will put filler there um, to help with those. And look, God bless them. I, 
I respect that the risky heck. business. Yeah, I'm thinking about um, migration. Yeah, Doctor Green, my ninja, my ninja provider friend up in Virginia. Uh, I mean, he's a rock star with forehead filler. Um, the man knows what he's doing. He's a trained surgeon. He's a rock star. But um, as a mid level provider, I'm always like super conservative with stuff like that. And for me, the benefit really hasn't outweighed the risks yet. Right. So that's why I don't put filler above the eyes. Even being a new injector, like I just fear, like even tear troughs, I just don't like that area by the eyes. Now, don't get me wrong. Maybe a little cannula work near, you know, in a safe spot, but tear troughs between the eyes, I just wouldn't even want to play with that. Yeah. Well, most people aren't tear trough candidates anyway. Exactly. So facts, especially down <laughs> south, man. I mean, I, I find there's a big geographical um, notation to that, right? There's a, uh, because everybody down here has allergies to something. I mean, everybody, if it's a pine tree or if it's, um, I mean, shoot heat. Pollen. And, right. I mean, look at my friend who learned the hard way. <laughs> no names mentioned. Girl. <laughs> she knows who she is. God bless her. God bless her. Well, let's, okay, let's go into that a little bit. We don't have to, I love her. I do too. She's a sweetheart. God bless her. We're, we're going to use her story, but not her name here, HIPAA, hashtag HIPAA. Um, what happened to our little friend here, Amber? So she came in as a um, filler model for me in my beginning. Um, and we filled her cheeks, um, gave her beautiful looking cheeks. She was so happy with it. Which uh, did help her under eyes. Oh, yes, tremendously. Um, but she said one of her main complaints was her, well, her two main complaints was her nasal labulons and then her tear troughs. And when I assessed her, me and Arden both told her that she was not a candidate for tear troughs. Um, and why wasn't she a candidate for tear troughs? She was just very, to be honest, I really don't remember. So, I mean, <laughs> Well, I mean, the skin is kind of yeah, creepy thin, and, and thin yes, there anyway, right? she's darker, you know. like. And she had an allergy already, issue. Yes, she did. She has major allergies, right. too. And we told her that. Um, she even got an opinion from one of our friends. It's a, you know, injector, too. And... She got. She a told little, her no. As yeah, well, she told right? her no too. Yeah. yeah, straight up. Three. So three people told her no. Three people. She was not a candidate. She got in one of her moments. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we all we have all a do. moment. We all do. Yeah, yep. where we want something. It's a habit, especially in this industry. Um, went with her friend to it, and she still won't tell me where she went, <laughs> which is probably good. <laughs> um, I gave her a hard enough time. Uh, got her tear troughs filled. Um, so seven weeks later. I see her post something on Facebook saying that she was getting her filler dissolved. <laughs> um, and I about had a heart attack because I thought that she was getting her cheeks dissolved and they were beautiful. And I was like, what are you doing? So then she admittedly told me that she got her tear troughs done. And she Busted. hated them. And when she smiled, that it caused big bulges underneath her eyes. No way. Yeah. So and listen to your provider when they tell you She was getting them no. dissolved. And then I asked her, you know, the question, did you learn your lesson? <laughs> are you going to listen next time? How about you stick with the two provi mm -hmm. the providers you know and trust instead of going to someone you don't even know who gave you something that you don't need? And here we are today, and I doubt she'll ever make that mistake again. <laughs> Let's hope not. A very valuable lesson. Yeah. I mean, so we're not going to tell you. So you people out there, don't, don't do what our, our lovely friend did. And, and God bless you, her. I love you, by the way. I she's, mean, she knows. She's beautiful. beautiful. And, beautiful. you know, we did a rock star job on her. Mm hmm Um. Man, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. Listen to your trained professional people. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. Or your TED Talk, really. That was all you. Yeah. Sorry. That one was just fresh on. <laughs> I mean, no, to, to summarize what you were saying, filler under the eyes is great. I find that, and there's some people online, there's some um, Instagram injectors that do a rock star job under the eyes. But if you notice, the, the two that I'm thinking of in particular, like Shelby for one, she's in Utah. Right. And then um, Nicola, she's in, I think, Central California or like Napa ish, San Francisco ish, sure. somewhere, somewhere out there. I don't think of big allergy profiles when I think of those areas. Um, but in the southeast, when you have the pine, the the nut allergies, you have the terrible inflammatory foods that we eat all the time. Right. I mean, God, they're good going down, but they don't do good for your skin, for your mental well-being, for your gut and for your tear troughs, really. Yeah, the 
bad part about living down here. <laughs> yeah, so I find my my indication window for doing tear trough window or tear trough filler exclusively is very narrow. Like, and there's other options we can do, yeah. like to help that area. There's skincare. Yes. There's um, laser helps. PRX yes. helps. PR, oh, and PRX. cheek filler Ooh. helps. Yeah. It. I'll do I mean, PRF under the eyes now. Oh, yeah. I was just about to say that. Yeah. PRF works great, too. I'll do that um, all day. Yeah. So just explore other options and be educated and don't just jump to filler underneath there because you will more than likely be getting it dissolved. Yep. I want to bring up this article. I mean, we got way off topic for a second, but that's okay. It was good stuff. Um, this article was posted um, yesterday, okay? And the title of the the, the article is U.S. Consumer Group seeks stronger warnings on Botox and similar treatments. Okay. And I'm not going to read this thing to you, but basically there's this advocacy group uh, called public citizen. Um, they're filing a petition with the U S food and drug administration about putting more warnings on Botox treatments and all seven of them actually. Right. Um, because re, re the reason being is that if Botox migrates, it could cause um, other muscles to become paralyzed. And that could be, really bad when we're talking about muscles of digestion or aiding and breathing and stuff like that, right? Which is why people need to be reminded that Botox and neurotoxin treatments are still a medical treatment, right? It's a medical service. Um, and you shouldn't be getting it in the garage of some backyard, you know, person who got it from Korea or something. Um, now, these medications, these medicines already have what's called a black box warning on them. And that's supposed to signify to us providers, hey, there's something that could be going on here. Um, you need to pay attention to this. Um, what are your thoughts, ladies? Uh, I have my thoughts and I'll give them to you in a second. Uh, what are your thoughts about this advocacy group trying to go ham on these neurotoxin treatments despite already having warnings on them? I think it's the same people that do the McDonald's stuff, no offense, but like, you know, coffee's hot. Why do you need more <laughs> labels on a cup that says, Hot caution will burn you. Like, I think if you're educated going in, you know what toxin does. You know, you know you've been explained the risks, the benefits. You sign that consent. I mean, you're you're well aware that something like that can happen. I don't know how much. I mean, I feel Everything like I feel has like these risk. days, like people want things to jump out at them. They don't want to read. They don't want to investigate. You know, like if it literally doesn't bite you when you look at it, then they don't think that's suitable. And I just like. It's lazy. I can't stand that these days. Like, I find that more and more people are getting lazy, you know, like not doing their education, not doing their, you know, not reading into things before they get things. And they just want that to jump out at them. Like, I just don't understand more than what more you could want than a black box label. Like, that's that to me, that sticks out to me. Like, when <laughs> I see that in a drug, that's like on my list of, mm -hmm. hey, watch out. I really, I'll rem remember it forever. Like, I don't, I really want to like find this person and give her a big hug. And tell her that, you know, mm, nah. you know, no one loved you in your life, but that's okay. I love you. Like, I'm here for you. I'm going to give her a Sudoku, a Sudoku book, too. Because she clearly doesn't have anything to do with her life other than to, <laughs> to bother us with these neurotoxins. She wouldn't be happy because the answers don't pop out at her. <sighs> I, it blows my mind, man. Like, yeah, it's got the black box warning. Yeah, we know as, as qualified injectors that if the medicine gets in the wrong spot, that's a bad thing. Um, I have never seen, heard, read... Um, heard other providers talking about neurotoxin spread so significant that it's going to go from a forehead injection to somewhere so serious that it's going to inhibit one's breathing or cause a life-threatening condition. Yeah, it's a local injection. It's not systemic. And it's temporary not going throughout too, just saying. your whole body. I, it, <laughs> it blows my mind. I mean, I'm not injecting it in your lungs, just saying. And we're not injecting it in your veins, yeah. so you're not... You're not systemically getting We're it. We're not going, yeah, I mean, <laughs> for a cosmetic injection, we're not going anywhere near a vital property that would cause a muscle paralysis of something so vital that it could harm your life, period. Right. Um, the, the article goes on to say there's been like 5,000 cases over 25 years that have reported adverse events and whatnot. And look, we know that it can spread, you know? So I know that if, you know, cosmetically speaking, if I put an injection by someone's eyebrow and it migrates down and hits a muscle that affects their smile lines. Well, I mean, they're going to look like they had a stroke. Um, that's bad. We've seen that. That happens. Unfortunately, the good news is that it goes away, but 
good Lord, like, leave us alone. And that's why you don't do lip flips. That's why I don't do lip flips. I mean, the again, benefits and risks, right? Um, They're a waste of money. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't see really good results from lip flips. Uh, I find that it's you're you're basically donating one hundred fifty dollars to the practice. Um, you might get some extra pink showing for a week, mm-hmm. but in, as a result, you can't drink out of a straw. Um, no, I drool. I drooled all over the place. <laughs> Yeah, it, it wouldn't help me anyway, knowing knowing my lip issues. So, and referring to to toxin migration, if that if that medicine goes anywhere where other than where it's supposed to be, <laughs> the side of your mouth is going to drop, and that's no fun. So you do smooth threads instead. I do smooth threads in the lips instead. Yeah, and smooth threads in the lips do a great job at uh, really defining the borders of the lips, giving a little bit of pump uh, plumpness, uh, a little bit of that ski slope. Um, that women so much desire. I, and it's a great like kick the can between filler sessions, mm-hmm. right? Because we know there's a big problem with running filler too quick in the lips, especially um, that filler will also migrate. And that's when you walk around with this big old clear shelf, shelf. under your lip. It looks like you, you got chewing tobacco up there or something. You're like, Nobody wants that either. So again, if I'm telling you no, I say no a lot. But if I'm telling you no, it's for a darn good reason. I'm happy to explain it to you. I'm happy to spend the next 60 minutes of my life telling you why I am and am not offering you something. Um, Ask those questions because I think that's super important. But then we come to a clear understanding and either you're going to sit in my chair or you're going to go somewhere else. God bless you either way. And look what happens when you go somewhere else. So, I, man, we're getting so far off topic. <laughs> I know what we're talking, talking about it. everything. <laughs> um, no, I, I just want to say to the per- person at Public Citizen who wrote this, I, I'd love to give you a hug, you know, but please find something more significant to do with your life other than bothering a medication that already has a black box warning. And yeah, I mean, I think it also comes back to are you a qualified injector or? Are you buying this stuff on the black market and, you know, injecting yourself or injecting in your garage or something, which is also illegal? Um, Because I think that's a lot of of where these complications come from. Mm -hmm. You know, again, it's from the folks that took a weekend course and consider themselves experts. And that's what I was going to say. Like, it's all about how much training you put into it. And I'm God knows we put a lot of training into our Lots of training, lots of money, lots of time. Even like, yeah, it's just it's ongoing and. If you want to go get your Botox from someone in a garage, then you'll probably meet this lady, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to find out. Okay. So God bless her. We're going to move on from her. What, what would be the top three things you would tell a new patient, someone who's never had a toxin injection before? Um, what would be the top three things that you would tell that person about getting your, your toxin injection, getting your ZM in injection? You're going to love it. Okay. <laughs> Once you start, you can't stop. <laughs> um, I mean, I feel like we kind of talked about this earlier. Um, I love how, like, the texture of your skin just becomes super smooth um, and almost glowing in a way. So your makeup does sit a lot better. A lot of times when you have those deep set wrinkles um, in your forehead or around the eyes when you put your makeup on and then you go throughout your day, it kind of starts creasing. creasing yeah. Um, nobody likes that. Um, and I mean, I, I always like staying as young looking as I can for as long as I can. So that's, you know, oh, you're not going to look fake. Mm-mm. You're not going right. to look like the bend and snap lady from Legally Blonde. Like, that's <laughs> or the guy from, or Tim Allen from Christmas with the Cranks. I yeah, mean, exactly. Watch that last night. That's, um, that's a good Fresh movie. It's a great movie. Yeah. You're, you're not going to look like that. <laughs> so. What you got? I'd say like. What was our question again? I'm going to lie. God uh, bless. <laughs> you got me so off topic. I just, you know. <laughs> I, I you got know. you so off topic. What are the top three things or the what are the first three things you're going to tell a brand new patient about their ZM and treatment? Hmm. Well, Catherine stole mine. Of course, you're going to love it. <laughs> um, I think you're going to be, as it settles, you're 
like you're going to notice those differences. Like you're going to notice the subtle changes that you didn't notice before. Mm-hmm. Um, there would be. You know, look more awake. Yes. Less tired. Yes, definitely. Um, always give it a full two weeks to kick yes, in. Yes, it can correct itself. Even um, if it's and most issues can be corrected easily. Like the Spock brow, if like one brow's a little bit higher than the other, um, that's very easily fixable. So go back to the injector that injected you. Don't be going shopping around and yeah, that's, saying I guess that's, this person messed me up. No, they didn't. <laughs> I guess it's one of my things. Like everyone's so different that people are quick to jump to like, yes. oh, well, this happened. This went wrong. This went wrong. Okay, it did. But that's why sometimes we schedule we're, it's out of our corre- you know, control where that toxin goes. Everyone, you know, like I said, everyone's different. Mm-hmm. Everyone you know, metabolizes it different. It lasts longer in some people, you know, so that's a really hard question to answer when somebody's like, well, how often do I have to get this? Yeah. Four, four to six months. I have, to, I metabolize it a lot quicker. I'm very expression, you know, mm-hmm. a lot of expression. So I, it's, let's see. Kind of set realistic yeah. expectations. Yeah. Cause yeah, everyone is different. Some people have stronger muscles than others. Um, I remember this, One girl that I did, her eyebrow, like her toxin kicked in at different times Mm -hmm. on each side of her face. Mm -hmm. It was very bizarre. So like for a whole week, one eyebrow had so much movement and the other one looked perfect. And so every time she raised her eyebrows, like this one would go up and this one would stay exactly where I wanted it to. And so we're, you know, a week in and I'm like, let's just wait. Let's just wait. Cause it's probably going to correct itself. I kid you not. I saw her the day before her two week appointment. So we're at day 13 and it was still doing it a little bit, but like as the week went on, it got less and less and less. And even the day before I'm like, let's just, you know, she's like, can I come upstairs real quick? And you know, just, you know, touch me up. I'm like, no, let's just, let's just wait till tomorrow. It corrected itself mm-hmm. completely. It looked flawless. So that can also happen. And it's not that the injector did anything wrong. It's just everyone is unique. And she might be stronger on one side of her face than the other. Oh, definitely. <laughs> we both you know. know that from our crow so, yeah. And you know? if you broke and down and at day 10 injected, injected her, her. You overcorrected an issue. And now you have a whole other issue that is not as easily fixable. So definitely, yeah. Wait the four, Be patient. Yep. Wait the 14 days. Um, There's a reason. Yeah. It's. Yep. Process. Well, definitely. I would, I would definitely say like, we're going to be, especially someone who's just now coming to us, like first time getting talks. We always tell our patients, like, we're going to be a little bit more conservative. Yep. This, you know, we might not knock out all the wrinkles, you know, we're not taking all of them away this time or ever, but you can always add more. Yeah. You, but you can't take it away. So, exactly. I mean, I tell my patients a few things that are completely different. Um, I, know. So <laughs> hmm, with, with my ZMN treatments, my new, brand new patients, um, I tell them, look, we're, we're, we're new here. We just met. So I tell them, we're going to be conservative this first time. It's going to be like our first date, right? So we talk about our favorite color and you know what we like to do on weekends and we might hold hands, but we're certainly not going to be talking about our kids' names and our honeymoon, you know, places they'll go on our honeymoon. So... I, I do a, a very more of a basic assessment and a conservative treatment. Sadie agrees. <laughs> she likes that idea. Um, our dog's She's in here with, with that us. Story, I think. Yeah, <laughs> I must be boring people out. So I say, look, I'm I'm always happy. I want you to come back in two weeks anyway. So if we have to add any more or do something else, I'm happy to do it. But I'd rather do too little than too much. Uh, number two, I say, do not rub your face. All right. We were just talking about migration and stuff earlier. When you start rubbing and scratching and massaging those areas, you are effectively moving that medicine that I was so careful to put where I wanted it to. So put your hands down. Like leave Don't it alone. wear a hat. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. We had to tell we someone yelled, that yesterday. Yeah. We both were like, um, take that off. <laughs> yep. Right. No hats. And then I tell folks to bring their friends because friends don't let friends get Botox alone. There you go. That's what I say. What else you got about Botox, ladies? That's it. We Botox the heck out of that. I know. It's my favorite treatment. Besides PRX, but that's a whole nother Catherine, story for, for another day. 
for the people that are watching, do you want to show your little picture off? Yeah, go for it. I think that would be a great thing. You so, want me to act as the patient and vocalize what my concerns were? Yeah. So and let's, you and Amber can kind of break down what y'all did, why y'all did what you did. Let's give the listeners here, since they can't see, let's give the listeners a little rundown as to what's going on. And, um, yeah, this is our little case study. So I am 30, for those that don't know, I'm 34, right? Yeah, I'm 34. <laughs> when you get past a certain point, you, you just stop counting. can't really remember. So I'm 34. Um, my temples were definitely hollowing out. When I washed my face, there would be like a valley. A little scoop. Yeah. Um, ski slope, as I like to call them. Um, so definitely volume loss in my temples that I wanted um, filled. And then my nasal labial folds um, under my eyes were like probably actually my least concern but my sec so it was my temples and then my jaw why are you lying to these people no i wanted my jaw remember she's I opposite you? of everyone else because that's their first two i forgot right. about my jawline yeah that's what i really was, wanted she really wanted i was very line. specific yes. about that well. i wanted a, a sharper jawline because as we age our jawline and our neck kind of s- start to blend together um and you don't have that it's like the Sharp tide coming definition. in on the beach. It just starts yeah, to like my number one complaint, erode. Yeah. Um, Get that box look. So that was, that's what I came in wanting. I'm going to say this before I talk about the picture. Every morning in that bathroom over there, you would just start touching those folds by your nose. Man, this, I don't like this at all. I would never hear about temples. I would never hear about the jaw. I would just be like, oh, I needed to fix this right here, like right <laughs> by my nose. Like that's all I heard. Okay, well, this session, because this isn't my first rodeo, this session, was it a concern? Yes. But was it my top concern? No. Okay. It's fine. on the wish list. Yeah. <laughs> you know, okay. ours are lengthy. <laughs> so for those on YouTube or for those watching this clip, now you can see over my left shoulder, we got a nice little picture here of everything going on. So the picture right here on the left is Catherine before, and then the picture over there is Catherine after. Two weeks after. We'll post this online, too, so you can see it on our Instagram. But um, that's a two-week, and that's a pretty drastic transformation. I know you guys, it's kind of far away in the video for you two folks, but what I want you to pay attention to is right up here, above Catherine's eyes, you can really start to see where she loses dimension on this forward-facing picture. Um, it, it just kind of flattens out, like she said. And so what happens is the the rest of the face appears thinner than it should and it, it's a it's a telltale sign of aging so most people don't come in amber you know this they, they don't come in talking about their temples it's a place that that's often overlooked or it's covered by their hair or it's just not sexy enough to spend money on and they don't want to do it um but i think it makes such a huge transformation so from there going down right below her eyes you notice especially i love the way the light hits her on the face here because you can tell that um, the light just cast all over her face and there's no line of demarcation. Um, go ahead. No, I'm uh, okay. Just, I've learned so much, uh, from my you know photography background, but as well as, you know, learning about facial aesthetics and, and the art of beauty, uh, women put on makeup to capture that highlight on the upper cheek and then contrast it with the shadowing. I don't know what makeup's called. I don't know all that, but um, you're trying to catch that high cheekbone and create a wider mid face. Um, you can see the light, the way it's hitting Catherine's face is there's nothing to catch it. There's no ridge. So it just falls and cascades down the entire cheek. Um, and then she does have a little bit of a boxy appearance down low. So in contrast, after we did filler, we did four units of, um, various fillers for her. We filled her temples. We did her cheeks. We did the piriform space, which is a little bitty area right by the nose, um, which helps inflate those nasal labial folds from down below. Um, and then we also did some jaw work that you can't really appreciate from the picture. And chin. And some chin. And so if you look in the pre-picture here, uh, if you try to imagine a triangle from ear to ear, that's being the widest part, and then coming down to the point. There's no point, right? It's kind of it's wide at the, the base of the chin there. 
And that's more of a masculine look. We want the chin on a female to be more pointed. And so we started to give her in the after, you can see that the chin kind of points down a little bit more. Um, the, f- the face looks much more slender and it's an attractive look in the middle. And then the light reflex. So you can see where the light reflex is catching right at the cheek where we want it to. And then it casts a shadow down below. I just noticed something else. Tell my, me. My neck looks skinnier in my wow. after picture. I was thinking the same thing. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Like even though you needed volume, your face still looks because when people come up to like when especially people who are very hollow already and they're like, Oh, I need I want I want volume, but I don't want my face to look fat. And that's what people mm-hmm. think. When you add volume, your face gonna look fat. To be honest, we added volume, but your face looks skinnier. And it's all about the way we you know full facial balancing. Yeah. And Arden, I wanna tell you, I you know, we went back to ongoing education and stuff and there's something i really learned the other night when i was listening to one of the um other injectors one of the webinars and something that i'm going to put into my consultation is when i'm assessing my patients to look like go behind them and look down on them and that's one thing yeah. we don't do and it she said it really helps to catch you know those you know where they need to be plumped up where they need to con you know the hollowness in their face and you know we all look at them from the front but i never thought about looking at them from like you know looking down on their face yeah. and step looking stool where will come yeah, in handy exactly <laughs> i love that um and i thought that was really cool to you know yeah i, that I know i want to implement you know just to kind of see from a different angle of you know something i might not see looking straight on them you know at them yeah so no i love that and what i want to point out and emphasize from this is that Catherine is in her mid-30s by no means is she considered old um and by most circles not even considered middle-aged but i mean we we made a significant investment here to make a profound difference. So when people say, oh, I'm too young for filler, it's like, uh, I, w- I wouldn't put an age on it, right? I mean, we all age differently. And if you've lost weight, if you have um, had some hormonal changes or if you're absent of some hormones, um, your body could feel metabol- metabolically older than, you're actually, than you actually are, than your birthdays tell you. So, um, for those of you out there, you know, you're 28, you're 30 and you know, you're thinking about doing this, come get a consult. Mm-hmm. Um, because you could be missing out on some, some years where again, going back to what we said in the very beginning, it's much easier to cr- uh, prevent a little bit at a time than to do it all when you're 60 and you have so much catch up to do. Yep. I mean, her skin just looks brighter, like tighter all the way around, like just an overall difference, not just the plumpness or the. I mean, I don't think I look 34 at all. Mm -mm. No. That's the whole point. But you look natural. You still look the same self. Yeah, exactly. Like, you wouldn't look at me. Like, your mounds in your cheeks. Right. You You wouldn't look at me from across the room and be like, oh, my gosh, she has, like, her face is full of filler. Like, I don't think anybody would think that. Mm -hmm. And actually, oh, this is what I wanted to bring up, Arden. Um, We had, all three of us had a great compliment about, I don't even think it was a week after I had this done. Um, And one of the ladies at Franco's came up to us. We were all working at on the computer at a table. And she's like, she stopped and she said, your skin looks really good. She's like, I feel like you did something, but I can't put my finger on it. I can't tell what it is. And I looked at her and I said, I got four syringes of filler a few days ago. She's like, what? She's like, that's definitely not what I was thinking. And she's like, you know, I thought maybe you got like a laser treatment or I don't know, or you were just like having a good skin day. And when I she, almost stood up and gave her a hug. Yeah. So when she walked off, I said, that's exactly what I want people to think about me and about our patients. Yep. Like we don't, I, maybe that's why we're one of the, I guess, like best kept secrets is because. Nobody I, tells their, their friends. I know, about which I, I wish our patients would shout from the rooftops like, oh, this is where I go. And this is what they did. Look how natural I look. But a lot of people don't want people to know. Mm-mm. So hopefully we can kind of push through that stigma a little bit that still hangs around there um i think that's a geography thing too i think that's a south thing maybe so because you go to miami or if you go to la or uh dallas you see you're like oh who's who's missing filler they they basically wear their shirt you know they're like oh this is where i go go check it out (laughs) right so you know if if you don't want people to know come see us because you're you're not going to be in a room where someone's like oh my gosh look at her lip filler look at what she got done like no Husband won't even notice. Like mine. Mine don't notice. Right. <laughs> He's right. like, oh, you did something? Like, you just look like you got. Right. 
But don't yeah. mistake that with not having results. Like yeah. there's results here and they're significant results, but it looks completely natural. Um, so, you know, when complete strangers try to guess my age, I don't know if I've ever gotten over 30. Usually it's like 26, 27. Yeah. I'll take that all day. And you still get carded on a regular I basis. I do get carded. So when I'm 50, I hope I look 35. Right. <laughs> so that's what prevention will do. <laughs> now I can, I can say this because you're my wife. Um, I think your before picture, um, you look tired. Yeah. Well, I, I have three kids. <laughs> Yeah, and, and, look, and own a business. I mean, I mean, yeah. we're busy. Like, I, yeah. you know, we got a lot going on. I get that, but I think you got a little bit of. I mean, it's just I look refreshed. Yeah, yeah, you really do. Like, you're not smiling in the picture on the, in the after picture, but you might as well be because it looks mm -hmm. like a happier version of you. Um, I think you got a little bit of Ozempic face on the left, and that's okay. Like, we we go much better than my pre Ozempic face. Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, we. And we'll, we'll have to talk about Ozempic on That'll be another episode, another episode, but, um, that's an expectation that we have, right? When you lose 20, 30, 40, 50 pounds, you're gonna lose it in your face too. And yeah. so we have, we have ways to correct that. So I think, can we switch to my jaw? I don't know. Can we? I don't know. Yeah. Put it up there. That. Oh girl, <laughs> I got you. Let's see. No, I don't. Oh, <laughs> let's see. Um, well, that's, that'll work. You can look at that one for a minute practice. and then, but the, um, the 90 degree angle is yeah really good too. Look at that. But this one's good too. <clears throat> so you can definitely see the difference. Let me find the My 90. My cheekbone is much more defined. Is it this one? You want to do that one or that no, one? No, the other. Yeah. This one? There you go. Yeah. Look at that. <laughs> My man. bruised side, which again is completely normal. Yeah. It's not you know, a bad outcome. Some people bruise and I still feel bad. About it just it, is though. what it is. So yeah, I, wear extra makeup that week. <laughs> I tell my patients all the time, there's three miles of vasculature just in your face. Mm -hmm. And so for us essentially going in blind and telling you that you're never going to bruise mm -hmm. and you're never going to, that's, that's not, that's irresponsible. Yes. Right. Um, it makes us look really bad when we do bruise you. No, but I will, I will say that we don't get a lot of bruising. We really don't. Um, I think we, we take all the measures right then and there in the room. And I think that we know what we're doing and we try to avoid all that stuff. So um, I think we're very blessed in that regard. So anyway, this 90 degree picture for those on uh, that are listening on your podcast of choice, you can't see it, but again, we'll post it. Um, the before is on the left. The after is on the right. And so this will give you I love this view because you can really tell mm -hmm. a couple of things. You can look at the projection anteriorly or going forward from her cheeks. And you can also see the jaw, which is just like glorious. I think it looks great. Um, <clears throat> on the left, on the before picture, you can tell that the there's no dimensionality to her face. That's because there's there's no dimension on her on her face. There's no there's nothing to catch those lights. So it's just all one big blob of highlight. Um but when you look at the after, you notice right by her eyes, it's doing a little catch light there. And then right beneath that, there's a little bit of a shadow. And even on, this is a direct, um, this is a very abrasive light. So when we're talking about, you know, taking your Instagram selfies and stuff, do, do any of you out there take your phone and hold it straight out in front of you and take a picture? Never. What do you do? You put it high. Um, you put it at like a 45 degree angle and that's because you want the light to catch in a certain way that gives you these dimensions that we're talking about. So in the after picture, you can really tell that even with a very harsh light, she's able to catch highlights and shadows. She's able to produce dimension. And you can also tell if you look right in the front, if you draw a straight line down from the base of her nose to her chin, like, right, let's see if I can do it with my hand. I'm trying to do this on the screen right here. If you draw a line right here, basically you could put a ruler right there. And um, I don't think her chin would touch. I think her chin would miss it by a little bit. But if you look at the after photo, this is why we paid attention to her chin. Um, we got a little bit of projection forward and projection down, which helps slim the face. And as you ladies pointed out, the neck. So, And it kind of, it helps with that, like, quote unquote, turkey neck. Yep. Um, that everyone complains about and 
wants to get Kybella for, which oh, that's painful. Um, that'll be another <laughs> episode too. Yep. But it helps with the, um, you know, making the under chin area look tighter. And then what I love about my after picture is that my face and my neck look like two separate spaces. Yes. Which is what they should. Bef- in my before picture, it just looks one looks like one big area and just soft and like there's no um, definition definition or separation right that was the word i was looking for <laughs> and, and that's why that's why we use this lighting the way we do when we're taking your pictures i think i think every woman that i've taken a picture of in clinic they're like oh my god don't show those to anybody mm-hmm. why because they're not flattering right? right they're not intended to be they're intended to be clinical and this is why um what Catherine's pointing out is that there is no delineation between her cheek here and her neck here, right? You could tell that there's like like a shadow that's trying to form right there, but it's really not there. Um, and that's age-related bony erosion, and that's um, you know fat loss and, and all those things um, that contribute to that aging. sign of aging. Now, contrast with the after picture, and it's like, bam! It's like perfectly delineated, right? It looks great, and it does. It makes your neck look... Um, more set back and mm-hmm. it makes it look almost longer. Even um, it gives it an, an anatomic space to, to call home. So, um, and if I, if I took a caliber to that neckline right now, I would guarantee you that it's right at that 120 degrees, which is what I shoot for. So um, I welcome. love it. Very satisfied patient here. You're welcome. <laughs> Happy. Yeah, to you're help. welcome. Yeah. That was a joint effort on y'all. Yes, y'all it did, was. Y'all did great. Yes, it was. <laughs> cool. And it didn't hurt. Good. Didn't hurt me at all. Because I think that's some fears, yes. some I was, common I was gonna fears. Bring that up too, yeah. Of people <coughs> are um, or pain, and also if you mention more than one syringe of filler, someone's like, "Oh my gosh, I'm gonna look so fake." No, you're not. Like your fate. I mean, as we age, we lose a lot of volume mm-hmm. due to a multiple of factors. Um, so I got four syringes, and you didn't put four syringes in one area. You kind of used it, sprinkled it throughout my whole face to balance my whole face um, and to keep everything into the appropriate proportions. Um, So four syringes can look like nothing. Like nobody even knew that I got filler at all. Right. Um, They knew something was different, but they weren't like, oh, she got filler. So four syringes may seem like a lot, but it's not. Right. And then look at the, like, we didn't even touch your lips, but just look at your lips. Yeah. Like you're... Just the areas we didn't touch. Look how much better, yep. you know, mm-hmm. everything looks. This is my first time seeing your before and after. And I mean, it's significant difference. Yeah. Like, yeah. this is why I love, I love seeing people's reaction when we show them their befores and after. They're like, oh, I don't really see anything. I don't see it. We had a lady not that long ago who said, I didn't notice a change. And we had to like literally show her. And she's like, oh, you know, <laughs> right. like yep. it's, it's hard when you look at yourself every day, every yeah. day. And you, you, all you see is the bad, I want to say the bad, but like We're the negatives or the, What's the most, wrong? You're your most harsh critic. critic yeah. Yes. <laughs> that when you do fix it, you're like, oh, well, I don't know. Like, yeah. It's just well, and think about how many times you look at yourself in the mirror every day. That's what I'm saying, yeah. Right? So you don't appreciate the subtleties because you, you see yourself so much, right? If I drove by somebody's house and saw that they were planting a garden and all I saw was just dirt, and I drove by a week later, and I saw this beautiful garden, I'd be like, wow, that's a huge transformation. But if you sat out there in a lawn chair and watched them do everything, <laughs> right. it probably wouldn't be as big a deal, right? So same thing here. It's um, I know it's one of my favorite things to show them the after pictures mm-hmm. um, and really compare and contrast. And even for like our, you know, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, our biostimulator patients and stuff like that, like even though they don't get that, you know, initial wow factor, should I say, um, they still leave happy. Like, I just really think that the way we educate them and the way we show them, hey, um, this is what your results are going to be. This is what's going to happen. And kind of the effect they have once they leave, you know, being a little swollen, a little bit of plump here and there, it kind of gives them an idea of what they're to look forward to. Um, Those people, too, looking at themselves in the mirror every day, and they're like, oh, I don't see anything. Once again, we show them their before and afters, and right. we're like, look at this. This was like three weeks ago. Look, you still have so much further to go mm-hmm. on your journey. 
that's exciting. I'll, yeah, we'll we'll have to spend a lot of time on biostimulators because I, I would I would do biostimulators on every patient that walked in the door. Every patient's a candidate. It's it's becoming one of my favorites to Love offer. It. Love it. Arguably safer, longer lasting, more natural yeah, results. It's definitely got a lot of pros to Ooh. it. Yeah. yeah, we'll talk about that later. All right. What else you want to add to this lovely patient, this lovely case study that we have here? That's it. I'm good. Y'all I love it. Like her. <laughs> yeah, I think I'll keep her around. <laughs> well, ladies, this has been fun. It has. Why don't you um, Why don't you tell all these folks how about your Thanksgiving? What was your Thanksgiving like? Maybe they care. Thanksgiving. Oh, Claire looked adorable. Oh my with god! With her little purse. Oh, she, she had, had her purse. Claire was she like. had her little pea coat on, and she walked in with her big bow, and she just. My girl loves life. her accessories. She was the it girl at Thanksgiving. Yeah. Um, but it was fun, you know. Got to visit with family and eat, and. I think mm-hmm. this was one of the warmest Thanksgivings I've had in a long time. Wasn't it kind of rainy that day? Not That's warm right? temperature wise. I'm talking about like just heartwarming. Oh, like, I, was <laughs> I think it was cold. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm talking about like just how awesome it was just to hang out and be amongst family. And it was just worry about the things that really matter. Yeah. In the days. Like, yeah, yeah. I really got to shut off everything else. And uh, it was nice. I loved it. Where'd you go? What'd you do? You go down by the camp? Oh, my camp, one of our camps, yeah. Sorry. That was, like, fun. <laughs> yeah. We um just hung out with family and did some deer hunting. And I know. I have an outdoorsy side to me. I like worry. it. <laughs> I like it. Um, just hung out and enjoyed. I enjoyed the days off, I'm not going to lie. I was, But I was me ready too. to come back on Monday, refreshed and yep. well slept. Me too. Me too. <laughs> now if we could just get through this holiday season. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah, be on the lookout for me, folks. I, I think this might air um, this next week. Um, two big things coming on next week. Um, my 40th birthday is next week. Womp womp. Oh, womp, yeah, it is. Womp womp. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, it is. Um, it's a calendar somewhere. <laughs> but I think I might be dressing up as little Mr. Santa Claus and selling gift cards out on Highway 22. Yeah. Yeah, so please please watch out for him. So Watch out for Arden. And take a picture if you pass him. Yeah, I'm going to be... <laughs> Completely embarrassed, but it'll be fun. No, no, you the best won't. picture, we may give you a good discount. Yeah. I mean, come on. That's a good That's idea. That's a good idea. I That's a good that. idea. Okay, best picture of me in a Santa robe on Highway 22 <laughs> gets, uh, I don't know. We'll figure something out. Yeah. It'll be good. It'll be worth your while. It'll be, but Please yeah. don't wreck. Please do. Yeah, please don't wreck. Yeah. Luckily, yeah. there's a light there, so yeah. if you're caught at the light, snap a picture. Yeah, yeah. snap a picture and tag us. And, <laughs> oh, I can't uh, wait to see these. We'll, we'll give you a nice little goodie bag. <laughs> All right, until next time. This has been fun. This is the Aesthetic Agenda signing off. See you later. See you later.